In fluid mechanics, we learned about the volume flow rate, which is the volume of flow per unit time. Let's consider an incompressible fluid flowing to the right at the velocity v in this region. And let's pretend that there is a ring of area A tilted like this in the flow and that the ring does not disturb the flow. The tilted angle is theta. What is the volume of fluid flow through this ring in a unit of time? In a time t, the fluid would flow through a distance v times t. So this much volume of fluid would flow through the ring. If we chop this part of the slanted cylinder off and fill it in there, we can see that the volume of the slanted green cylinder is the same as the volume of the orange cylinder. The base of this orange cylinder has a smaller area than A. Since this base is adjacent to the angle theta, the base area is A times cosine theta. Therefore, the volume of flow, the volume of this orange cylinder, is the height of the cylinder, which is the same as this V times T, times the base, A cosine theta. Of course, the time is T. The t's cancel, so we have v times a times cosine theta, which is a, a dot product, v dot a. v the velocity is a vector, but what about the area? Usually area is a scalar, but here area is a vector. And we use its normal vector for the direction of a. Normal means perpendicular, so normal vector is a vector that is perpendicular to the area. Mathematicians use normal vectors to specify the direction of a plane. Because if I tell you this is the normal vector of a plane, you would immediately know that the plane is oriented in such a direction. And each plane has two normal vectors, one going this way and the other one in the opposite direction. Sometimes a problem specifies which normal vector to use. Sometimes we get to choose. In any case, the volume flow rate is v dot a equals to v times a times cosine the angle between v and a. Between v and a, this angle here is the same as the angle theta. Because v is perpendicular to the orange face, v is normal to the orange face. So when the face turns by an angle theta, the normal line also turns by an angle theta. And if we choose the other normal vector, the angle between v and this normal vector would be 180 degrees minus theta. Since cosine 180 degrees minus theta equals to negative cosine theta, when we choose a different normal vector, our result would be the same amount, but would differ by a sign. In electricity, instead of a fluid flowing at velocity v, we have electric field E. Instead of volume flow rate, we talk about this thing called electric flux. For a certain area A, the electric flux phi E is defined as E dot A, where phi is the capital Greek letter for phi. It's like a capital I with a big circle. Flux is kind of like the number of field lines going through an area. For example, when the field is stronger, the field lines are denser. The flux increases, and the more field lines go through the area. When the area gets bigger, the flux increases, and more field lines go through the bigger area. When we turn the area into this orientation, the normal vector is in the same direction as the electric field. The angle between E and A is 0 degrees, so the cosine value is 1. Out of all orientations, this is the one to have maximum flux, with most field lines go through the area. 
Of course, we can also choose to use the normal vector that goes to the left. So E and A are in opposite directions. The angle between the two is 180 degrees and the cosine 180 is negative 1. We would get the same amount of flux but with a negative sign. And if the area is oriented like this, what is the flux through the area now? How many field lines would go through the area? Zero. The field lines would just go next to the area. None of the field lines would go through the area. The angle between E and the normal vector A is 90 degrees, and the cosine 90 degrees is zero, so the flux is zero.